Next, I'm going to talk about our unsustainable economic system. And there are three, more, three main points I'm going to touch on. First is that our economic system was never designed, as far as it has been designed, for resource limits. It was never designed for, for, for example, uh, the day when coal would run out or the day when oil would run out. Our system isn't designed to, to address that. Um, the second thing is that it, our economic system is based on a continuous growth model. If we don't have growth in our economic system, system then we either have a, a recession, unemployment, or an inflation, or a combination of those. So that again makes it an unsustainable system. A sustainable system would be able to um, continue keeping everyone employed um, no matter what was going on in the world. And of course our community where we live right now has complete reliance on this one global economic system that has been kind of coming together over the last several decades. So we'll look at this a little bit. First talking about limits and I'm going to focus on the energy limits that we're looking at. So you may be aware that United States oil production, U.S. was the number one oil producer in the world for a number of years, especially through the 50s. This was very good times for the United States. We had abundant resources and we were um, pumping at around 1960, 1970, we pumped about 10 million barrels of oil out of the U.S. each day and we were only consuming about seven. So we're pumping out 10, consuming over only 7. We were exporting about 3 million barrels a day, which was the most of any country in the world. We were the number one oil exporter. We were like the Saudi Arabia of the, of the world. Um, but we got to a point where the amount of oil left in the ground was uh, running, not really running out, but it was kind of getting harder to pump it out. It was harder to find and the amount of oil produced in the U.S. declined. What this is called is a, a resource peak, where all efforts being made to find the resource and extract the resource, but no matter how much money is uh, put to the effort, and no matter how high the prices go, and you might remember that the price went up two times in a very large way in the 80s, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can get any more out of the ground, because it's just, there's only so much to get out. So the U.S., this, this was actually predicted that the U.S. would reach a resource peak for oil. It was predicted in the 50s, based on how much oil had been discovered at that point, and we already realized that we were discovering less and less and less in the U.S. So for the U.S. projection in the future, you know, there's still oil, obviously. This is still a million barrels a day that we could theoretically extract all the way out for 20 years, but less and less oil available in the future. Now this illustrates how global discoveries, we found lots of oil all around the world, but most of those discoveries took place in the 60s and the 70s. The amount of discoveries, the amount of oil discovered in the 90s and the 2000s has been much, much less. And so you can imagine that you are, uh, that this is your income, and these are your work years where your income is high, but your expenses are moderate, and so you have a lot of money coming into retirement or whatever um, to play with. But as retirement goes along, this is, this is showing that um, we've been consuming more oil. The retirement example would be uh, the spending level goes up, which I know is not typical of people in retirement, but here's the income level. So what we're doing right now in the world is we're spending about five times more than we are earning each year as far as oil is concerned. And obviously that won't continue all that long. So our projection for the oil peak, and this adds up all the oil in the entire world that's being extracted each day. And uh, numbers come from the government for the most part. When you add up the United States, Europe, Russia, Middle East, all the oil in the world is being extracted each day, and this is projecting forward. This is probably the best case scenario. This is the best we could possibly do um, getting oil up. So notice there's still lots of oil. There's probably as much oil as we've already extracted. 
but the maximum we could get out each year declines, and it could be for a very long time. Now notice this is of concern because this is very soon, right about now. And of course it's a future projection, so we don't know exactly how it's going to happen. So this is a resource limit that our economy has not been designed to, to function under. Our economy has been rolling around, rolling along for a long time. Uh, when this first oil spike happened in the early 70s, that caused a huge recession and it caused the president to take the United States off the gold standard, which caused a huge amount of inflation. The second oil spike here, which was, I think, the Iran-Iraq war, that again drove the prices up, which reduced consumption in the U.S. People bought a lot of K cars and things like that. Um, but that also led to a major recession uh, at the start of the 80s. So it, it's not surprising that many people who are looking at this graph are saying that our economic system is going to have major things happening to it very soon. Recessions, depressions, those types of things. The government agrees with this. A couple of years ago, it published a report from the Government Accounting Agency that said that an imminent peak and sharp decline in oil production could, could cause a worldwide depression. And the report also talks about how the government's not really doing much to address this issue. Uh, there are many books that have been written on this issue, and I've read some of them, but after a while they get repetitive, so I haven't read them all. <laughs> this graph kind of shows how much money we're spending on oil as a percentage of the gross domestic product. So for a long time, we were only spending about 2% of our gross domestic product on getting oil. In the early 70s, when we reached that peak, it had been going down. But as soon as the US hit that peak and our, our production went down, we had to start importing. And that's when we became subject to the Middle East price levels. And the price level went up compared to the GDP. We had a recession here, and we had a second recession here because there's so much money simply leaving the U.S. And then the most recent recession this past year has probably been, in major part, <coughs> precipitated by this increase in oil prices. This kind of shows, um, if you're a business person, for example, you, you, have, uh, you have to decide the price of something you're going to set. So on this side, we have the demand for the, whatever it is, Suppose you're selling cars or whatever. On this side, you have the supply of cars. In this case, it's oil. And the price is where these two lines cross. For all the way from the World War II until about the 70s, the two were moving together. We were increasing the <coughs> supply globally at the same time as we were increasing the demand. We were more people, more cars, but we were also finding more oil. Now let's talk about what happened in the last three or four years. So in the last three or four years, the price level was starting, say, $20 a barrel. We continued to use more, more cars, and so on. So our demand increased. But as our demand increased, the supply did not increase. That caused the price level to go up. And then we came to a point where the, the economic system, which isn't designed to deal with this, came into a state of recession. And so these two are likely to go back and forth together for a little while yet. So it would not be surprising at all if we saw oil prices go way up and then way down, and they'd be associated with what the, the government would call recovery and recession, or the business cycle, some like to call it. So in our view, uh, oil, oil prices are volatile. The U.S. oil uh, did peak in 1970. Global discoveries peaked in the 50s. Uh, global oil production probably peaked in June of last year because the prices were so high, everyone was trying to get oil out. Everybody in, everybody in the world that had a drill was trying to get the oil out. And they were able to get oil production up to almost 90 million barrels a day. But since then, it's come down. Uh, that may have been the peak. It's hard to tell. And of course, there are economic consequences anytime oil changes, the supply changes. So next, let's look at the growth model of the, the US economy and the global economy. 
And before we go into that, let's talk just about money a little bit. And I'm going to try 